I see you. We're just muted, kind of getting ready to start in just a few minutes, okay? Thank you. Yeah, if you just want to mute, we'll be great. Thank you. Call the music order at the time. By the way, to put John and Randy on last chapter in time management, if I want to see the rest of the book, read next year. Uh, but, um, and Marissa has inspiration in uh, school. Uh, okay, so this is from Tom Miller. I played football in college. I wasn't here to be only about. 
it's really easy. You just put it in a table and the students come back or we look like at car loans. So we need kids to go to the car loan table first or cars and they want to buy a Maserati. <laughs> and then they have to balance out the rest of the day with the amount of kids that they have. And sometimes they have to send those back and make a different choice. So it's a really great opportunity for kids to have anybody in the organization that can volunteer for the Is there like a curriculum on that that volunteers are following, et cetera? Or um, how does that there is. It is actually um, like I sat at the uh, chance table where you might get a uh, $1,000 refund or you might have to pay for you had an accident or a hospital bill. So there's just like kids rolling dice. At each table, you have like you show them the cards, and then they would choose a car, and then they write them out of the payment on their check register. So there's really not a, there's not a whole lot of teaching. Gotcha. It's really more of a simulation for right. them it's that supports the instruction that we're having in the classroom. Okay. So it's a it's a real life simulation for them to understand about you know making their money last at the end of the month. And I think you touched on the GPA thing. That to me is the best part. These kids realize, hey, my GPA is 2.5. Here's my income. If it was four, I would have made this much money. So it kind of reinforces you, you do need to try it. School. Right. Income. So they get an income based on their GPA, their attendance, and they answer some survey questions before they go. So they're, they're uh, and they imagine themselves at 26 years old. When they answer the survey question, so it builds a scenario for them, and you know I really enjoyed it. I think Gosport, yes. I'm going to the next okay. year. I was out of town. Amy was there, so yes. Get it in. Um, all right. Uh, uh, Mark Pierce has got an update for us with uh, personnel and enrollment. Morning, everyone. So. Since we started registering or involving kids in the process of learning about the, the CCA, we've had 1,050 kids express interest in the following. That's grades 9 through 11. Current students, so it's 1,050. Of those 1,050, 430 are eligible to attend the academy next year. So those, we have 430 students who have actually pre-registered to be in the program. Of those 430, 400 actually qualify. We're still working with the 30. Now, that's a wonderful number. We are working now, Shanika's right now in the high school with Dr. Logan just left, are actually registering the students who have pre registered. Now, there's going to be some changes uh, depending on schedules and, and, and things like that. So, um, my goal is to have 300 when the school opens. That would be great. If we have less or have more, it's our first year and we're growing the program. So, I'm real excited about that. So that's just some tentative numbers um, that we have so far. Personally, we have been interviewing Dr. Logan and Ms. Grower and uh, myself have been interviewing and interviewing. We interviewed until we need a break of interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so of those interviews, we have hired our, of course, we have Keith already on board, our talent development specialist. Uh, we have Alex Grisworth, our welding teacher. We've hired our teaching as a profession instructor. Um, we have hired our uh, pre nursing and healthcare instructor. We have hired our criminal justice instructor. Um, we are still working and interviewing and working with HR on the other positions. We have some interviews coming up again, and we'll update you when I have those numbers. Of course, Dr. Logan will do enrollment, and Shanique is our counselor, and he is the principal. So there's your staff so far. It's an exciting time. It will be um, eight, eight teachers. And then Shanika, myself, and Dr. Logan, and then in our, in our online career, we have to our eight teachers. Well, they will have a reception at the reception. Yeah. Mark, is the registration code closed now for students? Or? No, it's ongoing now. Okay. Um, Shanika's in, in LFO today. She just left uh, Green Gold and Heritage as a heritage charter. She's in LFO today. Then she has eight other dates scheduled to go in to speak to students individually and work with the counselors there. They're being trained too. Yeah, Shanika has a huge responsibility in training three sets of counselors and eventually middle school counselors as we start sure. the, the recruitment for middle school. So Shanika has a, a huge job ahead of her that um, her plate is full. Uh, 
Um, so we're excited about her. She was what I call a GH, a great hire. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so we really, really appreciate it. Uh, we, we have been very fortunate, Shanika, in working with the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services. We already have uh, Mr. Jones, yeah. of course, Dr. Logan has been on board from day one, and, and um, our staff is amazing. I was told yesterday that I had the best staff in the county so far, so um, I appreciated that. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for the update. And probably one of my most exciting things at the Academy is, uh, is our uh, professional development, and that's uh, Keith is, uh, Jones is here with us today. Is going to provide us an overview of, uh, of our professional skills and so, yeah. And so, I'll uh, keep going up here. I just want to say a few things. Um, you know, and, and most of you, some of you are new. So, went from the very beginning, going out and interviewing businesses, it rose to the top in every organization that the lack of work ethics, professional skills, um, soft skills. Rose to the top is everybody's greatest concern. You read the article that I sent to you. Um, you know, we've been in this process for four years, and we are. That article shows that we are in the right uh, place. That we are we are addressing the things that everybody is concerned about. And I will tell you that you know, in our college and career academy meetings, everybody's try. Everybody realizes the problem. Nobody has. And I am so thankful uh, for Keith because we have something, the thing that he's going to tell you about, we have the opportunity to not only be a shining star in, in the state, but to actually potentially do some very big things in the nation that sets apart from anybody else. And so I, uh, I appreciate his work. We are so fortunate to have him. But I will also tell you, if any of you try to hire him, <laughs> Let me tell you something. I, I am a girl that was raised in the country, and I understand how to flatten tires. So if he comes to your organization, you will never have tires with air in the air. And that's key. Okay, down to where there's a sheriff I actually train our students not to talk like that. <laughs> well, good morning. I am so excited to be here. What if I told you that Clinton County has the opportunity right now to do something that no school system in the nation has the capability or is prepared to do that excites you? Yeah, yeah, it would. Not. Two of you guys walked in the room and said, you're so excited for what we're doing. Well, I'm going to tell you before we leave today. You're going to be doing backflips, cartwheels, whatever you're going to do, because we have the opportunity to go somewhere that no other school system has gone yet. The question is, will we go? So, Ms. Marissa, I don't like to talk about me, but Ms. Marissa asked me to just do a little bit of background so you know how I got here. So, here was my journey. I'll tell you, I'm not an educator. Uh, I'm the furthest thing from it. Ten years ago, you told me I've been in the school system teaching. I told you, you're nuts. Uh, and that wasn't in my plans whatsoever. My journey began, I spent 17 years with the Union Corporation, was an officer. It was in 1998 when I first heard the word EQ. I was in the HR training with one of our directors. She was talking about the management team. She made this statement. She said, someday your EQ score will be more important than your IQ score. I didn't even know what an EQ was. It sounded like something to do with audio equipment at the time. And I said, uh, yeah, right. They gave us a book. And then what companies always do, they give you a book. Well, I read the book. I became enamored with emotional intelligence. The past 25 years, it has taken me places in my life I never thought I'd get to go. And so that's what I'm doing here for the school system. Uh, I am a graduate of the UNM Leadership Program, Leadership Excellence Accelerated Development. It's an 18 month leadership program that's a prerequisite to be an officer with the company. I left in 2011. I won't go to the reasons why, but we murdered with a bunch of companies. They wanted me to go up north. and. I just said, I'm staying home. So I went and did my own thing. I became a contractor with Foresight Management Development Company. They're a company out of Chattanooga who goes to companies and sales training, EQ training. And I was a facilitator for them working as a contractor. We talked with CEOs down to their board members and everyone, the most intelligence. 
And then I have been a volunteer for EQ trainer for the Georgia Department of Corrections. They rolled out their faith and care based program. I tried to find how many years ago they can, but been several. But I've worked at Walker State Prison in Rock Springs and Central State Prison in Macon, Georgia, training our inmates on emotional intelligence. And that was quite an adventure to say the least. Never done that before to work with men. And it's basically focused on men who are about to get out of prison. I call it knocking the rust off the edge, just trying to get some of the lingo. I learned more from those guys than they probably taught me about life in prison. That's another story for another day. And then, as you know, well, frankly, who would have ever guessed I'm working the school system? I still have to pinch myself sometimes. It was four years ago, four years in July. My wife was in the training in Orlando, and I was sitting by the pool. I was in the for the last thing on my mind was getting a call on some crazy character like to my left over here. But a lady on the other phone introduced herself as Miss Brower. I knew Superintendent uh, Reese, Miss Dina. We'd had a relationship. I was on the board with community schools, and so I knew Miss Dina well. I never met Miss Brower, and she called. I'm just lounging, you know, I'm thinking about retirement, you know, what am I going to do the rest of my life? And she said, we're building the academy. And our corporate partners have said we need a professional development program. Would you be interested? Well, I've done some volunteer work in Tucson County before that in the past three years. And yes, Miss Dina gave you my name. I'm not sure how you got my name. And I said, well, you have an off-the-shelf curriculum that I can use. No. Can you come up with something? When you need it four weeks. And that's where we began almost four years ago. I understand now why she didn't have something because there is nothing in America that exists even to this day. And I'm going to share more about that at the end. There is nothing off the shelf that exists to teach high school kids emotional intelligence. However, it is now the hottest topic out there going on. So that's enough about me. Oh, I like to write novels as well. I've published three novels. So I've got a fourth one in the work. This lady keeps keeping me busy. I'll never get to that. Never happen. A few things that I've done this year that I was going to share with you. I have completed, I'm now certified TDRI instructor. That is, that is training through our community school partners. An amazing training. Uh, four days of it, but it was awesome, awesome training. I'd recommend it for anybody that gives you the sympathy of a child. Certified habitude instructor. Habitudes. Is our ninth grade, for those of you who don't know, it's our ninth grade curriculum that we teach uh, that Dr. Elmore puts out. It really fits under the EQ umbrella of habitudes that come from habits and attitudes. And so I certified in that. And then I will have the pleasure of attending the Factory Kids Park in Atlanta, and that was amazing, amazing. So every one of those has given me more tools that I put into my tool bag that I use in training. Then I've been studying for the past couple of years is the multi generational workforce. Most of you probably know what happened in 2016. For the first time in human history, American history for sure, we had five generations to hit the workforce. And it has been a challenge to say the least. So I, I got enamored with that and studied that. And then I put a presentation together that I've shared with Miss Amy Spirit. Uh, we did it this year for the leadership class from both Walker and Catoosa County. And it uh, very, went off very well. And then I went back and did it for summer. Right here. And you are right there. Uh, for primary health care leadership team. So that's just a few of the things that, that I've been doing this year, but that's not what I'm most excited about. Now, I'm excited about all of this, but I've been in the middle. Every year we do this training, and every year I just bust it up and we go back and look what worked well, what didn't work. I can tell you, what I did the first year is I went in thinking, okay, let's teach these kids emotional intelligence. I went right in there day one with Daniel Goldman's four buckets of most intelligence, and I was all pumped up, and they looked at me with glassy eyes, and they had no idea what I was talking about. They weren't prepared for it. They weren't ready for it. They weren't psychologically ready, so I had to back up, and I told Mr. Chris, like, you got to redo something. Something's got to change. So every year has been a different iteration, and right now is no different. I'm in the middle of blowing everything up we've ever done. we got something brand new, and that's what I want to show you today, because I am so pumped about it. Here's a few bullet points. I'm going to go through it. Now, I will say this. I'm going to talk as fast as I can, and I want to be I want to be so um, aware of your time and get you out of here on time. So if you'll hold questions till the end, I'll be glad to answer any questions you've got. But I'm going to try my best to keep moving my lips and keep going. Here's some bullet points of what we're doing. Those of you who have been around the system know we've had an alphabet system for a long time, meaning A to Z. All of our modules start with an A and go through Z, 26 modules. 
we're going to keep that because it's how the kids seem to really remember it. All of them have had a key memory phrase. We're going to keep that in place. There's a new name for our curriculum. It was 3D Development Training, and it's now going to be Gen Z Pro Trainer. I'll show you that in a minute. We're going to go to a new color scheme. We're still going to use the red and the blues. When we started, we wanted to make certain, uh, one of our concerns when we started was to make sure we included all campuses. So we used all the shades of red and blue that was in all of our high school colors. And it's a good thing, you know, we didn't have a school that was orange and pink and green and yellow, and they, so it worked. So we're going to maintain those colors, but we've got something that we like better. We're now going to have a development of a single page student handout, fill in the blanks. We were printing the entire module for the students, and that could be possibly to print five or six pages a week times three or 400 kids, you can imagine. So we're going to a single page with fill in the blanks. We'll show you that as well. Development of a leader's guide. A lot of what I've, I've done is in my mind. And as most of you know, that's not a good place for anything to be. Feeding that. So with every module, we're gonna have a leader's guide. It's back, it's actually a front and back. that has all the notes that I use, all the tools, all the resources, all the peer-to-peer -peer activities. Where do you get it? So anyone could pick this up and go teach this material. And I think that's imperative for us to have in place. So we're working on that. <laughs> we're implementing now two songs for every module. One's a theme song. Most of these are pop culture songs. An opening song and a closing song. The opening song is, is faster. The closing song is more makes you think. I'm a big, big believer in deep breathing. I think every one of us needs to deep breathe at the end of the day. Think about our interactions, our words. What did we say? What did we do? Where did it come from? Did it come from a bad place? Was it filled with resentment? Uh, treat them fair. That's how deep. So at the end of the training, the students get a chance to think about it. Often I'll have them close their eyes and we'll, I'll bring out the lyrics of the song so they, they know what to listen for and think about what we're talking about and, and let that kind of sink in. So when you hear me say I use that for debrief, it's at the end just to really reinforce that training. Then we're going to use the implementation of images. If you're a college football fan, you've noticed this happening for many years now. They call plays using what? Signs. It could be a horseshoe, a lightning rod, and a unicorn. And the defense will have them. And these kids, these Gen Zers, pick up images just like this. Dr. Elmore also reinforces it in his training, in his book. Every one of his modules will have an image. And so we said, why not? So we have created images, and we've done that this year. Every module has an image that goes along with that. So I want to take a minute and show you what this looks like, because I can tell you that, but until you see it, it won't make sense. Our first module is now accept responsibility. Hey, you say that with, this is training today, accept responsibility. Accept responsibility. What we try to teach these kids in the first module, you're now a junior and senior in high school. It is time for you to take responsibility for your life. You're blaming everybody else. I don't care if you come from one parent, no parent, my wife and I have been foster parents. Doesn't matter if you're a foster child, whatever it is, no excuses, no complaining. It's time to take responsibility. I share with them my testimony. I did it one time, or one one time. I've heard me class a week this year. But I share with them. I didn't come from privilege. I shouldn't have made it. I should have been a statistic. But somebody invested in me, somebody put some effort in me. And I want them to know that you can be great. There's greatness within you, but you have to take responsibility. It's your life. We say that the infamous pen is in your hand. You get to write your life story. Every time you make an excuse, you hand the pen to someone else. You get responsibility. So the first one is accept responsibility. And we use this beautiful little image right here. We see this dog right here who got in the trash today, right? What does he do? He goes and finds a piece of cardboard. And he goes and finds an ink pen. And somehow with his paw, he writes his message and said i did this with my mom and dad where it worked well, ties it around his neck and he accepts responsibility every time i pop this image up you know what the kids pop out accept responsibility i put a word up all day long i can throw that image up accept responsibility what does that mean because i gotta be responsible for my life if they get nothing more than that we win that's the cornerstone our second oh here's the songs we use it's my life, Bon Jovi. <laughs> we rock. We dance. This class is probably different than any class you've ever been to. It's about building confidence. It's about having fun. It's about building up their self-esteem, their character, their self-worth. 
a lot of these kids, guys, what I've found out, they come from hard places. I had one student told me, my, my family told me all I heard me struggling was just like that. It's my job to tell a kid there's greatness in you. We can, we can turn you around. And this kid actually going to graduate, we hope, next December. It's going to be, he's going to have to stay an extra year. We had to tell him you're not ready to graduate. So we have a lot of fun then with both fights on the range of plan. So you know the image real quick. This is module B. Module B is belief. You have to know what you believe. These kids don't know what they believe. Here's the power of beliefs. From our beliefs, we create attitudes. From the attitudes, we create action. And our beliefs and our attitude and our actions result in behaviors. If a student believes that engaging in class, doing their homework, will help them graduate, go on to whatever they want to do in secondary and, and be successful in their life, then the behavior is going to show what they believe. But if they don't believe that, if they have false beliefs or damaged beliefs, then we see it in behavior. And so when I work with these kids, I don't start with the behavior. Some of this comes from that TBR training is so important. We peel back the onion and go, there's a broken belief, there's a broken something in this child that we've got to repair because the attitude and the actions are given a, a behavior that's not. So we have to know what we believe. When we look at this athlete, I'll, I'll show it to the kids, like, what do you think she believes? I can say, well, look there, she believes in preparation. She believes in working out. She's laser focused. She's looking down the track. She believes she's going to win. She's not looking at the competition. She has some beliefs in her that drive her attitudes, her actions, that result in her behavior. So, I'll stop believing by journey. Yeah, a lot of these are old rock anthems. I bet I've listened to 700 songs in the last few months trying to find music to go with all of this. And then our debrief session, we go with the slower song, When You Believe, by Mariah Carey. We used one more image. You've probably seen this one. Three animals were involved in making this dish. The how contributed to make the butter, chicken gave the eggs, and the pig supplied us with the, the ham. Two animals contributed, one was committed, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the third module is, commitment. We're not looking for kids that want to contribute, we're looking for kids that want to commit. So the ABC in our modules are really the core three to get these kids started. You've got to accept responsibility, you've got to know what you believe, and they, they begin in what we call an I believe state. They begin to write down, what is it you believe? And if you don't know what you believe, and not about this school, about life, about 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 faith, about career, about home, about love, about relationships, about money, what do you believe? What do you believe? I don't get to write their beliefs. They've got to write their beliefs. Now, I may help them if they have a belief. You know, if they write down, I believe all dogs are bad. Well, I know you've been bitten somewhere in your life, and we need to correct that belief. And I'd be a little bit facetious with that. But, but sometimes we have to help coach these kids. So you know what? That's coming from a hurt place. If we can help you do that hurt place, we can guide you to get the help, or we can recommend that you get some counseling to get through that hurt place because you've got a false belief that's going to take you down a dark road. So commitment. By the way, we all want to be a bunch of pigs. When I say that, I mean that very kindly. <laughs> all in or nothing. So our song, I think I'm breaking my stride by Matthew Wilder. And then Don't Give Up on Me by Andy Grammer is our debrief. So when you hear me talk about images and music, this is what I'm talking about. We found just this year, I popped these images up, and I can go through the deck, and the kids just know exactly what they are. So we're following what has been taught. All right, I want to show you a little bit of the, the current curriculum. I'm, I'm proud of it, but I'm so proud of what we got now. Uh, when I told Miss Peggy a few weeks ago to change in the curriculum, she said, oh, I like the old stuff. Don't change it. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Peggy. You know, sometimes old stuff has to go by the way. But this is what we currently have. It's called three-dimensional development training. There's the color scheme. Uh, and then this would have been the inside. Obviously, this is in a landscape versus portrait, so it's not that wide. But you can see it's very wordy. You see, I'm coming from a professional 30, 40, 50 year old training. And this is what we had. And, and believe it or not, it's worked. You know, the words haven't changed, it's just the layout's what changed. So, do you want to see where we are now? Would you like to see what's coming? Yes. Somebody said yes, I'm going to do it. This is our brand new layout. You can see it's still 
blue and red because the colors pop a little better, don't you, when you say? It has been kid tested. We have asked for input. That's the title of it, Gen Z, which is the generation yeah, we are training. Professional development, we just called it Gen Z Pro Trainer for these kids. Power skills. Now you'll hear four words right now, won't we, Mark? They're changing all the words on us. Durable skills, power skills, workability skills, soft skills are synonymous. It's just soft skills training, okay? I pick power skills for this because it's one of the new ones. Durable and power are the two new buzzwords that they're using. So I don't care what we call it, but that, that's the reason power skills, I work on that. So power skills for high school students, module A, accept responsibility. We open now with a question. This question for this one, what have I told you you have within you all you need to accomplish? Anything you can imagine, are you ready to take responsibility? We want to just kind of open the class. Are you ready? What do you what do you want to do? So I'll go around the class and say, well, if you could do anything, if you could be anything, you could, what would it be? I want them to think that way. Probably what's going to happen next is we're not going to play our anthem song. We're going to rock a little bit. We're going to lighten it up. Then we're going to come and go into the module overview, which again, this is in our current training. But we just laid it out a little bit differently. We have our quote at the bottom and another question. What does the word destiny mean to you? This training is very interactive, very interactive. I'm not up there lecturing the whole time. It's, it's, it's more about them just learning and listening to what we're doing. And this is going to be the first time they're going to see the image. We're going to introduce the image and the statement for this module. I will accept the responsibility for my destiny. I will write my life story. And those of you that got to go with us to Atlanta four years ago know this is what the kids quoted. They went through the alphabet. They didn't have the image. But they went through and quoted the 26 states that Jonathan A was alarmed back then. So we've changed a lot. We've gotten more comprehensive, better material. But this was, I will accept responsibility for my destiny. I will write my life story. We'll talk about the dog and what we're doing different this year. Every page, they're going to see that dog. And then we have a major, our major first thing that we're covering is that responsibility. Is when you embrace who you are, accept responsibility for your life. And then our information just laid out a little cleaner for them and another quote. So every page in our training is going to look like this. The dog is going to keep popping back up. So they don't want to forget it. Major thing for this part of the training. And then our other quote, get a link in that one. Every time the dog's going to pop up and we're going to go through. And we think this layout is much cleaner for the kids to use than that very wordy, very adult. But, but again, remember when I started, all I knew was what I've done with executives and with professionals. So now, four years later, I'm learning on a film that there's a better way something that, that looks a little better for the kids. So what they will get will be a one pager just like this. And every word that you see in blue, that's italics. It may not be on this presentation, but the ones that are the real ones, um, have italics words are filling in the blanks for the kids. But I remember you like to write some stuff down. All right, oh, yeah. remember that four years ago, try not to forget. So they have fill in the blanks, but now they have just a single page. The page has the image of the dog. It has the title of the lesson. And the power quote. So now they're going to have 26 pages at the end versus I didn't bring what, what it looks like now. It's about that thick when you print six times 26 is a couple of hundred pages. So that's going to be easier for us. And actually, I've talked to Miss Marissa when we get this nailed down, we could probably send 26 to print have workbooks made. But they would actually just get the workbook versus pages. But we keep tweaking in it. So if I've learned anything with doing books over my life. Don't send it to print till you know you're ready to go because it costs a lot to do it again. So, do you like that? Does that look okay? Does that look better? Yep. Yeah. I think it looks better. Well, I want to show you how we regroup this. You've got in your handout something called our new power skills alphabet. One of the things that I've worked on is not only just having a great alphabet, but getting the curriculum, the training material grouped together in a way that it made sense. Because I, I don't care what we're going to teach for letter E, if it's not time to teach E, it doesn't work. <laughs> so that's part of the rearranging of this. And I'm going to show you what I call is my alphabet tree. So in the alphabet tree, we start down here at the foundation. The first nine modules, I think they're in red, another in blue, your paper. We start with accept responsibility, beliefs, commitment. We teach debrief, the power of them reflecting. How did today go? How did I do better? 
etiquette. This is business etiquette. Friendship. What does it mean to be a friend, to have friends? When's it time to let loose of some friends if they're dragging me down? Gaining respect. All the kids want respect. I hear all the time. Nobody respects me. I tell them, you know, what you're trying to get is not respect. Respect begins when you respect yourself. When you carry yourself in a certain way, people look up to you. And I explain to them the respect they're trying to get is actually called fear. You know, a gang, a gang leader doesn't have respect. He has fear. He's got a weapon. Somebody's got to get him. Sweet Jesus, what is what does real respect mean? How do you respect yourself? And I'll tell them, you're not doing your homework. You're not going to get my respect because you, you don't even respect yourself. It begins with so. Now, teach me if I can cheer for you. <laughs> honoring yourself is that that's one of my favorite ones. Our image in honoring yourself, we want these kids to know there's greatness within them. And so we've got an image of a cat. And it's sitting in front of a mirror, and you know who he sees in the mirror, not a cat. Oh, no, a lion. And that's what we want the mentality of these kids to have. There's a lion within you. You know what songs we use? Peggy Perry. Yeah, I know. Roar. You're going to hear me roar. And I got to go back to my generation. I have a tiger. So, there you go. so, so one of the music reinforces. And the kids have fun with it. But what we want them to know is there is greatness within you. We round it out with integrity. Doing what is right when no one is watching. Integrity is not when the sheriff's watching. I drive say. Integrity is when I drive say, I'm the sheriff's watching. <laughs> but, but we need to teach these kids you need to do right when there's a twenty dollar bill laying in the floor you turn it in you don't put it in your pocket you don't want that's not a test room. right so we, we talk so this is the foundation that we begin on now we're ready to get what i call the trunk of the tree that is judicious awareness that's where we're going to daniel coleman's four buckets of emotional intelligence self-awareness self-management social awareness and i changed the fourth one a little bit Make easier for the kids. Social management. A little different, one word different than what Daniel uses. But that's where we jump into that. Keep processing my perception. These kids, if they've got hurt in their life, if they've got bad experiences, their perception is of things wrong. I teach them the bump in the room is neutral. Why do some kids go through the hallway and bump each other? And one turns around to fight, and the other one meets a new friend. Why? It's because their perception, their perception comes from their life experiences for all. Some total of our life experiences. If you had bad experiences, you weren't wandering around with drugs on your shoulder. We need to work with that. We need to help change it because your perception of life is skewed. So we talk a lot about that. Listen to body language. 93% of communication we know is nonverbal. Our, our body language and our tone tells the message. We talk a lot about that. Memorize our message, verbal communication. We talk about memorizing what they say and putting that back. Biggest problems can become an opportunity. How do we pivot out of problems and see this as an opportunity? You quit complaining. I love this module. The power of great attitude and enthusiasm. You guys know that will change anyone if you've got the right attitude in life. And then our respect your teammates. So this is what I call the, the heart of the tree. Then our remaining modules I call the fruitful EQ techniques. Seek innovative solutions. We want them to learn to think outside the box. Think outside the box. Don't, don't just stay in the box, but learn to think outside the box. Think about their feedback. Feedback is growth fuel. You're going to become a professional. You've got to give feedback. I hope you guys give me feedback, good and bad. And how do you receive that feedback? How do you grow from that feedback? It's so important for these kids. You know, utilize synergistic solutions. We talk about synergism. And in this context, I use it in conflict resolution, where I'm not looking for I win and Amy loses, but how do we win? How do we look at it from a synergistic approach? And how do we have a conversation and dialogue and say, well, what could work for both of us? How do we meet in the middle and work out those situations? Value the adult ego state. That's when we get into transactional analysis. We teach them the child, parent, and adult ego state. By the time I tell you a funny story about that one, the child used it on his parents who were drinking, his family who were drinking too much on holidays. He said, there's a lot of child ego state going on in here. And, uh, 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 don't go home and start teaching this stuff. <laughs> What's interesting though, his aunt was a counselor, counselor GPA. It's just weird to learn about transaction analysis. She knew that's not being taught. She was just being taught in high school, not in college. Though. W, when you were born, that's when we're going to make the kids aware of the five generations. A little bit different thing. What we do in the multi generational workforce because they're not in the workforce. But they need to be aware that if you're interviewing with someone who's 75 years old, 
uh, texting and TikTok may not be in their dialogue. You know, how do we know how to communicate with them? They might actually want something written, or they may want a phone call. So it's just making them aware of how to interact. X marks the spot in goal setting, which is the smart goals. Why we define me? We teach the kids how do I come to those when I come to those crossroads in life. How do I take information and set that out? How do I make the smart decision? I come there, and then we close with Z's do a body good, work life balance. How, how do I stay sane in this world that we need? The importance of getting away, the importance of continuing, the reading, the yeah. in our mind. So we talk about that with the last. It's taken four years to arrange this tree, to get these letters, not just using the 26, but to get them in a way that I believe the kids are prepared. It, it, honestly, guys, it takes us the first two months to get these kids ready. I start with the fire trucks, my first lesson every time. This is There's three things we do before we ever get to that age when the kids first come in the room. And, and Mr. Mark, you've seen the fire truck several times. But I tell the kids, I said, I want you to envision this room empty. Nothing's in here. No adults, no one. And I've got 10 three-year-old boys. And I walk in here with those 10 three-year-old boys, no supervision, and I put a fire truck, and I bring a fire truck, red fire truck, and I push the siren on. I said, guys, what's about to happen if I walk out of this room? They know what's about to happen. Holy chaos about to happen. Whatever bad words those little three-year-old fellas know is coming out. Fist of cuffs are going to come out. Okay, I, I, said, I said, students, here's, what, here's the real deal. You're born with emotions. Every action we do comes from emotion. If somebody doesn't help train you and teach you what's going on, you'll end up to be 23, 33, 43, heaven's sakes, 83. And that three year old child, from an emotional perspective, is still out in the workplace. You can't figure out why you can't. Why is it not working for me? I'm smart, but your EQ illiterate. So, they get that fire truck drill, so that's what I'm here to do, is to get the three-year-old out of you and help you mature and, and, and to interact in a different way. So this is our alphabet. Well, a few weeks ago, Mr. Mark shared, I, I don't know how he got from Mr. Mark to Ms. Marissa, but he got to this part. You know, and I love this stuff, and it's the high demand of durable skills. And it came from uh, an organization called America Succeeds, and this is part of their mission statement. America Succeed works to ensure public education systems prepare every student to succeed in competitive global economy and contribute to the local community. So I read that and thought, okay, what, what are they saying? Well, they did a study. Here's what they found. They partnered with EMS, EMSI Burning Glass, and they analyzed, I can't believe this, 82 million job postings in the last couple of years. That's that's pretty exhaustive study. From that 82 million job postings, Seven of the ten most requested <laughs> skills were power skills, durable skills, or soft skills. I'm not surprised at all. Most of my sons now work in management and companies. And every employee has to read this book right here first thing when they come on the job. It's the ideal team player. It teaches three things. Are you humble, hungry, and smart? And every employee that they have has to be humble, hungry, and smart. It's not IQ smart. Are you people smart? Are you good with people? Are you hungry from do you want? You are you willing to go get it? Are you humble? They want the top talent, but they, I don't want arrogant. I don't need a top gun to work. I want, I want humble, hungry, and smart. Every interview question they do, they now tell me. I talked to my kids this week to make sure it's still true. It's all EQ questions. They can read the resume, find, find your IQ. I want to know if you work with other people. How are you going to work with customers? How are you going to interact? So I'm not surprised. That's what they found. 3.8 times, almost four times more power skills were requested than technical or hard skills. Due to rapid innovation, 60% of kids in pre-K today will work in a trade or industry that doesn't exist today. Isn't that crazy? 60% work in a field that doesn't exist today. I'm not surprised because when we do the multi-generational workforce study, the reason we're such a quandary is because innovation is changing things so fast and we're living long. In the last 200 years, longevity of Americans is just growing longer. So change is, is creating this. And here's what they put in the article. The best preparation to face uncertainty and rapid innovation is a combination of academics, digital literacy, here I am. Power skills. I just love when they put that in there. The three-legged stool of the K-12 future is right here. This is what's going to drive 
school systems that are going to produce the top talent. And here we are, four years ahead of everybody else. America succeeds is writing this. So I wanted to know how does our program fit with what they're advocating? Because here's what they did. They took those 82 million job postings, they identified 100 soft skill words, or what I call buzzwords, and they took those 100 words and categorized them into 10 power skills, and here they are. Leadership, character, collaboration, communication, creativity, critical thinking, metacognition, mindfulness, growth mindset, and fortitude, and they gave some definition beside them is what they're really talking about. So I was sitting there that night, I, I sent this note to Mark and Marissa after it. I just said up one night like I'm enamored with this now. What are we going to do? So I took our 26 modules that we have currently formatted. I said, how do we align with that? Well, are, are we on the right path? Because if this is where 82 million employers are requesting, are we close? So here we went. I found that under leadership, 11 of our modules support or grow leadership, 10 for character, seven of them help with collaboration, eight with communication, five with creativity, six with critical thinking, 10 with metacognition, 10 with mindfulness, seven with growth, and eight with fortitude. Obviously, there's overlap. To be a great leader takes a lot of different attributes. So I put matters, I wouldn't forget them all. These letters just represent the modules so I can go back and check my work later and go. Am I accurate? Did I really go through that correctly? Not one of our modules didn't fit in to what they're advocating. I was so happy that we're on target with what we come. Wouldn't it have been sad? Mr. Marissa has been working four years and find out we're on the wrong road. We've been traveling, but we're not headed in the right direction. So, guys, we are headed. What we have for our county, for this academy, is right on task with what America succeeds is saying. And they are they are an advocate. They are promoting that power skills, durable skills, soft skills got to become a part of K-12 training. So here's what's on the horizon. This is where I'm really going to get excited. We get the new building. I haven't seen it yet, but I hear about it. I've seen pictures. And I, I've got a room in this building, don't Mark. I've been told that. Right? I feel like I'm getting Christmas. I've been told Santa's coming. It's beautiful. Kind of office, but I haven't seen his rain very late yet, but I've heard he's coming. Guys, I know the county's going to give us an amazing room, but I've been talking with Miss Marissa. I want that room to be the most incredible professional training room the world's ever seen. I want it to be something that you're proud of. You want to bring the business partners, more to bring your customers. I want you to come see this part of this building. Now, I want the whole building to be amazing, okay? I want every, I want this place to rock and roll. When you come upstairs, I want you to go, you're going to take a deep breath because it's about to blow you away coming in here. That's what I want. So we're, I, I just can't wait. I'm excited. Can you tell me I'm excited? I'm excited. I get excited. I, I've got to complete these 26 modules into this new format. I've only done three. When I say this is brand new, I just showed to Marissa a few weeks ago. I said, I've got a brand new idea. I've got some new concepts. I want to change the whole thing and bust it up, but I've got five months, so we're going to get there somehow, some way. But I've got to get that done. Uh, there's been a request for us to do a multi-generational workforce 2.0. So I've got some books I've been reading, and we've got some notes together, so we are going to put a, uh, this together. This is what we're calling, I guess, a value add for our corporate partners. If I can come out and help them in some areas of company, so we've identified some other categories we're going to do some training on, hiring the right people, and all that kind of stuff. So it's on my board in my office. I have forgotten. It's on the stove. It's not off the stove. It might be on the back burner right this moment. But that one's on the front burner. We're working on this one. I'm so excited about this. Uh, Ms. Marissa and I have talked since I started about should I be certified? Been doing this for 25 years in and out. But I told her, I said, you know, you can go get a certification for $99. And it's worth what you pay for. You know? So, as I typically do, I go from Maserati. And you've got a piece of paper, but you don't have to turn to it. It's in your folder, you can read it later. The Talent Smart EQ is the number one EQ trainer in the nation. 75% of Fortune 500 companies are Talent Smart customers. In addition, the United Navy, and the United Navy, the US Navy, the US Air Force, the United Nations, the World Health Organization are all Talent Smart EQ customers. In addition, in the last few years, 
they have figured out that it's probably how to write grants. And so now they're going into law enforcement agencies and teaching uh, law officers emotional intelligence because they're understanding if they can really understand the psychology of how humans work and think and not deal with the behaviors, but go deeper inside of what's going on and how to interact. They're working heavily in law enforcement. They've also gone into prison systems. They're doing work with correctional officers now. So I was talking to a lady by the name of Amy Wolf, who's the vice president of the Southeast region uh, for Talent Smart. And I told her, you know, I was interested in certification and what did you have? And so she said, well, you know what? We've got a train the trainer program coming to Atlanta in May. We'd love to have you come. And so I was invited to go. And let me just say thank you. Superintendent Nix and Miss Marissa and Mr. Pierce and Ms. Melissa and Eric. I don't know who all was in. You know, I was telling Melissa I finally put a face for the name. You know, I don't know what I did county office, but I've run everybody off, I guess. The last <laughs> <time>. <laughs> so I'm still putting faces for the names, and, and I don't know who's involved with everything, but, but the county has made it possible for me to go and be a certified talent smart EQ trainer. And I think that only adds credibility to what we're doing um, that I do that. But, but here's what was interesting. She asked me what I was doing. I said, I've been working four years on something for high school. She said, that's interesting. She said, did you know there's no company in America that figured out how to do high school? Did you know? So she asked me this question right here. <clears throat> Would you be interested, once you're certified, partnering with us on an EQ training program for the nation? That means, you know who's first? Yeah. So here's the opportunity. At Tusa County Schools, lead the nation high school EQ training. See what you want. It's in front of us. Now I'm telling you, I get I get motivated. I, I smell blood in the water. I know that's the corporate side coming out. You know, when we saw a marketplace, we saw an opportunity. Man, how quick can we get to market? You know, let's get there. We want to be first. We want to be first. Guys, I envision the day when EQ will not be a room in a school, it'll be a wing of the building. Because this is the moving part of educational training. They tell us, experts are telling us now, you can take an average kid, average IQ, high EQ, he or she can rock the world. They're, they're unstoppable. But you can take a student, master's degree, a low EQ, they can't get out of their own way. It's the truth. It's the reality. So EQ training is the most trendy thing that's coming, but nobody's figured out how to do it. You know why? Because we do what I did four years ago. We try to take what we're doing for executives and CEOs and mature adults, and we try to bring it to students. And it's not dumbing it down. These are smart kids, but you've got to prepare them. So we started the roots to get them ready and it's about two and a half months, three months before we get into really the heart of emotional intelligence. But then they're ready. So we've got a four-year job on everybody in the nation. And this is an amazing opportunity for us. So I've got three questions before I take your questions. Here's the first one. Responsibility, brother. Five months. We're up in the building. Five months. Five months. Well, let's just <laughs> Can Mr. Mark do it by himself? No. Can Superintendent Nix do it by himself? Can Ms. Marissa do it by herself? Thank you, Marissa. No. Yeah. Right. 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 Guys, it, it, it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. We have to accept that responsibility. This is our responsibility. We we have a chance. It's sinking into me. There is not another school in the nation not to open up what they're offering. No, there's not one. Nobody has the EQ comprehensive program. They may have books, they may have some stuff they're doing, but they do not have what we have. That the top agency in the world is, it wants to look at to see if they can take nationwide. We have it, and we're on the threshold of greatness. We got to take responsibility. You don't want to take the question. Don't worry about it. What do you believe? See, if you don't believe me, then there's not going to be any attitude, no actions, and the behaviors are not going to be what I want. 
So what do we believe? Do we believe this is going to make a difference? Do we believe that this is going to change kids' lives? You know the third question, don't you? <laughs> Are you a pig or a chicken? I'm a pig, man. I'm committed. And Miss Chris could tell you it's taken me a long time to get here. I wonder if I wanted to do this. Then. Every year she's had to talk to me once or twice. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know any other way to be transparent about it. But I, I can make three times go do this somewhere. But I tell you what, I come to the place that I, I've had my moments in the sun. I've had my corporate jet rides. I've been from my, <coughs> I, I've had my fine dinners in New York. But what I get to kick up now is taking some kid who has no confidence in themselves, who sits in the corner. I know I can tell when they walk in the room where they sit. I know where they're at. I mean, you can pick it just by where they sit. I know who I'm going to idle back. I know about to idle up. You come and you sit on the inside front row. It's like, oh boy, I got to idle you back just a little bit because you're going to want to answer every question. When we get the team activity, you're going to want to elbow everybody out of the way. So I've got to idle them back a little bit. We've got a kid who just sent to Shaw in the mentor program two years ago when I met him. I know he comes from poverty. He's a senior, he still doesn't have an automobile. He walks to LFO every day, walks in the rain. His complaint is, I wish they'd built some sidewalks so that I could walk to the pitch. I don't know if I was, I don't get into all that. But I've seen him at the grocery store shopping and buying groceries for him and his brother. This kid's been in our Megatronic program for two years. He just started, the bus will pick him up actually from here. 12 o'clock today, take him across the street to Shaw. And this kid, that wouldn't speak a word to me will now talk. He actually interviewed with Shaw and did great. And he's one of our top students this year. It's going to change his life forever. Because this kid told me, so I got two checks. It's not going to be long. I'll get my, my car. It's going to be fixed. And I'm getting my insurance. I'm going to be able to drive the world. And for us, that don't seem like a big deal. Where he's from, it's the game changer. So I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm yours. And Mr. President, kid, if somebody hired me, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm going to see it through. I've accepted my responsibility. You know, I, I'm really excited because I, you guys have other things you've got to go do this afternoon. I know. This is only too much. I've been four years working on it. It will accept responsibility. To my corporate partners and even even faculty members, uh, let me tell you how you can help me. These kids need to see your faces in my classroom. I'd love for you to find one of your pathways and get with the schedule. But you know what? That 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 topic right there, man, that speaks to me. Can I come help you teach it? I go, Hallelujah! Yes, I'd love to let you come in. Maybe you got somebody in your organization that's a great trainer. Don't bring me some buddy does that doesn't have any life. I need spunky, exciting, vibrant. I, I'll have to coach them up if you can send me those. You say, well, wait a minute, they're not certified to come in. They can't. We'll figure all that out. You're going to find out. I don't break rules. I'll challenge them. I'll figure out how we get through them. Are there votes? I don't, I'm sure there are. Aren't you? No, no black tires. <laughs> kind of one. <laughs> so, guys, this is where we're going. This is why I'm so excited. I'll be honest with you. If we had opened a building four years ago, we would have had some training. But, but honestly, the pandemic and everything that slowed us down in the four years that I've had, because this is my fourth iteration of teaching these kids, and honestly, it's taken me four years to get to where we are. Have something. Is this going to be set in stone? Absolutely not. It is a work in progress. We'll massage it. There'll be things we'll need to change. There'll be topics that'll come up. We'll find gaps. But I feel like we're really, really, really close to having something that we can be so proud of for our professional development. So with that... I will take any questions that you may have. I'll turn this over. I'm going to get sick of water. Any questions? I'm going to tell you. I know, I know you've been excited about this. Though. I know you've been excited about this. Oh, my God. So you're asking us for a commitment of where you be? Um. Careful. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not uh, I know you're not kidding, but I know you. I know you. 
I ended up making the decision because you know, I know you know, <laughs> <laughs> with, with the kids. Oh, yeah. That's a story for another day. I, I think what I mean, well, I think I can speak on behalf of the whole, the whole academy. We need you guys actively involved. Pathways. These kids need to see what success looks like. They need to know. They need to know you first, and they need to hear your stories. They they need to know that you came where and go to there because they don't. Sometimes they believe that you were born that way. That maybe it's just all given to you. And so when I shared with them, I was the ninth grade student. I was a senior in high school. I was one of the bullies. I was the one that was tied up with duct tape, fixed in the dumpster the day we had spaghetti, and they thought it was funny, and they laughed around it. And I ran to the kid. Maybe you were bullied. Yeah, and I, I, was, I was the one that considered suicide as an 18 year old. Hey, but you, you emotional. Said, yeah. But somebody saw value in me. Somebody coached me up. Somebody invested in me. And it took me several years to believe it. But I know the difference. You know, Scott, I've had the privilege of flying on the board of jet on the New York and I was flying back on the jet and flying across the country. And I said, Who here believe this little country boy? South. It's always funny when you go into a new place and go, you're from the South. Accent. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's what these kids need. So we need your participation. What I need in the classroom is I've, I've, I've got this vision of what I want. <coughs> and it's going to take a little money. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to do what I want in the room. But there's a few things I want in my room. Most important, I'd love to have your partnership and training partner. Um, I just think to have professionals come in and interact from a business. And I would say, I know you can't come to every class and teach all 300 kids, but align with your pathway. And, and I, we can find out. I have no idea the schedule. These geniuses over there are figuring all of that out. But, but when it's the megatronics day or it's the nursing day or it's the healthcare day, you say, you know what? I want to come to that class. I want to help you. I want to help you teach integrity or whatever it is. Let's figure that out. Let's work that out. Because, hey, they need to see a different face every so often. You know, a little bit of change is good. But they also need to hear your story and be transparent with them and pump them up. <clears throat> Man, if you drop that Maserati, show it to them, you know, let them know that they can be successful. Because a lot of these kids, this is what's been out with me, they don't really believe that. They don't believe they can make it. And so therefore, they don't put in the effort. So that's Jonathan, probably the biggest thing is just Let's roll up our sleeves and get involved with these kids. Be willing to share your story. And I can't speak on behalf of all the other instructors in the building. Uh, but I dare say so each one of you guys in, bring them in. And feel free, my door will always be open. You want to bring a group to come in and sit in one of my classes? No, I love that. And I've had that happen. I've had board members uh, from our school board. Here. I mean, that's it. Uh, first year. Yeah. Yeah. That's that we want to go over again. So. So yeah, so that's that's where I'm really I mean I, I don't think we need paint carpet. I think all that's handled right now. So I think we're good for that. It's just just you know there's a few things I want in there. I've got this what's in my mind is I want when you look at professional training rooms now, you'll see they'll take powerful quotes, the words are just on the wall. And so I want, I want that on the wall. Right? In front of the windows, up on the tables, nice furniture. I want it to be very professional feel. When they walk in the room, I expect them to have a different character. There's certain things that may be allowed in the rest of the classroom that aren't allowed because I'm trying to teach you how to talk to the rest of the we just aren't accepting it. We don't follow it. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear it. So that's going to be when they, when they cross that door and the form is different. Right? Hardly yeah. that right? So there's a few things I requested. So it's like this laminate hardwood, dark hardwood looking. So I wanted it to feel. I know when I used to go to the executive suite, you need a unit when you got off on six floor. Every other floor looked a certain way, you got the executive suite. And it just has a feel about it, and that's what that's what I want. To know. So I know I've talked well. Jump in here. Because there's a question. Um, Mark had mentioned the 300 that were in there, and but 1,050 is maybe applied. If I understood that correctly, 1,050 expressed interest. Interest. That's not interest. Right students okay. well, which are not eligible. Yeah. What about what about those students? The other other than the 300 who are going to get this fantastic thing that uh, fully support. What what about the other students? Some of some of which probably need these these things as much as anybody in the world. 
you mean the other students in our high schools that will not be coming to the Yeah, yeah. All right, so the 300 privileged ones, right? But, but I don't know what the criteria was, but what, what about the other students? We are working with every career class that all ninth graders take, which have an element of this. But my vision is to allow Keith's program on some level to be in that ninth grade required class for all students, which in that class, they use that handbook from uh, Dr. Elmore, the habitude, is the curriculum used in ninth grade, which is a start. And then we also have the CTA standard number one, which is the top professional skills as well. Now, is it cleverly packaged as this? Maybe not always. So that's why I want to work with Keith and our prepared career teachers in each of our high schools. There's about six of them that teach every freshman to come through our doors. If they have an element, they will get this full force, uh, but they will get an element of that, which was our vision years ago when we created this class uh, for students to be uh, you know, job ready with those professional skills. So I'm going to piggyback on something Mark said. So freshmen have certain courses they have to take. And you don't get the luxury of taking elective courses, just like when you go to the college, you get your master's degree or whatever, master's degree. Your first couple of years, you're taking what they call core. That junior and senior year, you get to take the fun stuff. Those first few years, it's just to state they just require it. We can't waive it. There's certain things we can waive, but we can't waive those. But one of the things that Mark has asked for to, 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 to bridge the gap between this and the freshman is, number one, as we've been looking at allotment with Dr. Butler, Mark wants a dedicated uh, habitudes from year to career teacher that freshman year. Right now, it's all over the place. A principal will say, well, you're going to teach a block, and you're going to teach a block, and you're going to teach a block, and it doesn't. It does, no head is dead and two heads is a freak. He wants one head that says, you are in charge of this, and when he has a problem with it, he's going to call that person and say, you're not teaching what we ask you to teach to get kids ready for this career academy. And that's happening now. Mark's aware of it. He's met with the principals and he said, we're going to fix this. He told me, he said, Superintendent Dix, I need a couple of years, but I will get it there. So the first thing we're doing is on our lot, that we're giving him a dedicated from here to career teacher that's going to take some of the things he's talking about with Tim Elmer, with his attitude, some of those pictures and things. That will happen that freshman year. And then, as the kids get to that junior and senior year, they will be allowed to take these courses. There's a lot of different reasons for that. Some of it is funding. Some of it is because of the way the state allocates their hours for dual enrollment, which most of the courses that, that these folks are teaching, kids getting dual course credit for it. And so there's rules that the state has for that. Plus, Keith's just awesome, but there's only one of him. <laughs> you know, they're just one Keith. I wish I had 50 of him um, because you, you're exactly right. Every single kid needs to hear what he's hearing, and that's what you're seeing in this room. Gary's sitting over here saying, copyright that man, grab that, don't let him go, and wearing me out. I'm so Gary's going to help me shut the flash of the tires. I want to know. I want to know how you got to that. And from a business side of it, I mean, so everything in the kitchen sink. And and not just that. I think that the teachers need to go. You know, and so because it's the duplication of duplicate yourself. And if the, if your other teachers in the academy don't have the emotional IQ to actually back up the most important part of the process. Spin the wheel. It's a one man show doing it instead of a whole conglomerate in that. I would like to see the whole college career academy, for instance. So when you walk on the campus, it's different. Meaning, okay. not, just, not just in your classroom. But it's pretty, well, well, but there's a difference between you saying that and the belief system of the three people are there. Because the questions, the questions you have to see are not action. You know, it's, it's actually physically what happens on the other side of it. You've got to have alignment. And you really determine on what on what happens on the other side. Um, so I I would love nothing more for that. But I think that's that's the game changer for a student. Well, I'll say this. Y'all know I don't make a decision. Yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah, but, uh, let me applaud the Tulsa County to get what we are. We were somewhere four years ago, somebody heard private businesses to get us where we are today. And it takes time. When I say I envision a wing of a high school to dedicate to you, I'm not talking about tomorrow or next year. In the future, because this is so important to just humanity. So I agree with you, John. Everybody that's around the other should go through PI training, in my opinion. If you're going to 
Now, if you go in a club and, and you're a programmer and you never talk to anyone, okay, go do your thing. But if you inter interact with humanity, you need to be trained at some level in this. How we get there? I think we can train other people to do that too. And that's the reason I'm creating leaders, guys. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't create a leader's guide. I'd keep all these notes to myself and go, I'm going home and go somewhere. But I want that. I want there to be a guide. I've got spreadsheets to tell you every image, model, the songs, who's the artist, where did I get it, what motivational did I get off YouTube. All of this information we put on Google Classrooms, students can go back out and reference it. We have some of the assignments will be fillable PDFs they can work on it. I don't know how I'm going to check all 300 of them. That's why I'm going to have to get some help from somebody, you know, to check 300 students' records to see they do the work. But I think we're building some, and I think the academy is the right place to start this in-depth training. And then how do we branch out? There's smart people around me who will figure all of that out. But I, I agree with you. I believe that every high school student in America, that's the reason when they ask me, would you be interested in partnering? Jonathan, I'll probably be looking to my business partner and go, okay, what do I need to know before I go down and talk to them? But I look at it like this. I want to be a Catoosa County partnership. This, this is not about me. I don't want to make this about me. This is us. I'm part of Catoosa County. I want to be. I want to be part of Catoosa County School. It's about us. And we have an incredible opportunity. And that's what excites me. We, I want us to be five years from now. They fly in to Chattanooga to come and see what we're doing in this county. How do we take EQ from that we've got it at? Right now, as I said, there is no other business to figure this out. How smart wants to? Oh, they're on our radar screen. She emailed me the other day. I said, don't forget, I want to have a conversation while you're down there. I said, I haven't forgot. So it gets on Amy Wolf's mind. She won't talk about it. I agree. we got to figure out trademark, licensing, copyright, yeah. all of that stuff. I realize. I've made that mistake with the book, had things out before I'm going to send it off to the Library of Congress and get my copyright in place. So, yeah, we'll figure all that out. But I have a heart for our county. Hey, if we can help take this nationwide help kids, put them out of it, put it in the box and say, you can't, you can't play with us. So, well, I've got several more. I think some people may even have a lot of questions. But can we, let's get through the rest of this. And if you got a few minutes afterwards, we'll. Sure. That, sure. I have a Just to be respectful, you know, I mean. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll blow through this real quick. Um, uh, you want to go through your CO review? Well, you, no, you have my report. I have not done this since October, so there are several pages. Just if you want to know, am I doing it? <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to go to the uh, yes, sir. Uh, we have the Community Foundation of Northwest Florida beginning balance of the CO uh, The CCPS account has beginning balance of 5000 Designated for a welding machine tool, two hundred thousand for total funds up to sixty-seven point ninety-eight forty. Well, I'll tell you this one thing I've done based on the last time I went back to my controller and said, Hey, what was our commitment called uh, Career Academy? So the best that can actually start funding our behalf of it. So I would recommend anybody that make commitments out there, now is the time to start start funding that. So those funds, um, we get a letter out to everybody to make sure that those yes. commitment letters people are reminded of. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking for it. I'll find it. Maybe right back. Right. Well, you can just get that out there so people recognize, hey, it's time. Um, it's some action steps for the folks who are going to get engaged. Uh, okay, do we have two action items that we need to consider? Um, risk All right. Recommend. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? Motion. motion. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and then I'll have, do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. All in favor? Anybody object? <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Thank and then you very much. We'll, we'll make sure we need discussion. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about